We made it home. We made it back. <laughs> We're here. Wow. That was quite an adventure in the end, huh? Yes. Okay, so in case you don't know, we have been away for a month and a half. We were in the Netherlands picking up some of our stuff, moving to Spain for the first time, actually moving. Yeah. Because we never moved here. And also collecting a ton of tools, furniture, etc. that we need here and wanted to bring back. Is this your stash? <laughs> Everything? Including the ladder? Oh, wow. It's been a fun one and a half months. Yeah, it was a fun experience in the yeah. end. Huh? We've collected yeah. a lot. <laughs> and not everything we could bring with us this time. Are they cool? Yeah, they're really nice. They're really good. It's like the proper chair. But to bring stuff back to do the move, we bought a trailer and we decided to drive back with our car. Yeah, it was quite the experience because we had to do it in two times. Luckily, you found the Hasset in France, in the area of La Rochelle, mm -hmm. above Bordeaux. Hi! Say hi! Say hi! <laughs> and it was great. Yeah, it was a good stopping point for us to come. I already thought that perhaps the drive would be really grueling, since with the trailer you have to go slower and, you, and you're more tense, more alert. So we wanted to stop along the way and have a few days to rest. I unfortunately didn't sleep any of the four days. <laughs> Because no. the house had had a cat that was very vocal <laughs> all night long, every night. And because Werner just slept right through it, I woke up like five, six times a night. So yeah, we've spent a couple of days in France. And we went to the beach with the dogs. to have the sun out. We and spent some time in La Rochelle, which is an amazing town, really beautiful. So beautiful, yeah, we saw it yesterday. Is <laughs> and then yesterday evening, we started the last leg of the trip home. The reason we've been driving at night is because with the trailer, we felt a bit unsure of being in traffic, basically. And the French highways always have a lot, a lot of traffic. During the day. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people going up and down. So we didn't want to risk being in a stressful situation because of that or having to break because of any yeah anything that can happen and at night time we kind of save ourselves a lot of worry hustle, and hassle right, stress. Yeah. and we had a great drive eh? especially yesterday yeah there yesterday was, was much easier than the first time there was no car on the road it's 2 30 a.m and we're an hour and a half away maybe two hours maybe two hours away Ooh, it's gone dark no more light on the highway. Okay, I'm excited to get home. I'm excited to sleep. So the plan for this video was that we were going to wake up here after <laughs> sleeping a few wonderful hours, tell you that we had gone on this trip, and then show you as we unloaded everything from our trailer and the car. In a very relaxed way. In a very <laughs> relaxed way. Take our, our time, show you everything we've brought back with us, etc. However, the reality was very different. We got here at 4 a.m. It's 4.05 a.m. and we've made it. And now we have to figure out what to do with the trailer to drive up to our property in the dark, which is very tricky, or to leave it on the main road and try to figure it out tomorrow morning. What are we gonna do? We didn't really know if we could make it up to our property with the trailer because to our property there's quite a steep driveway and it's not fully paved. It's tricky, even if you're just driving a normal car, it's tricky. But we couldn't really leave the trailer down in the road in case something happened to it because there was not, not really a parking spot. We could have, but we, we decided not to. <laughs> yeah, well, we were a bit nervous. <laughs> it was and 4 a bit a. stubborn, so... And we're like, let's just try and see because our car is amazingly powerful, as you yeah. see. We did the first hill fine. Yeah, without any issues, yeah, and then which gave us a bit of 
too much confidence. And then there yeah. was a flat bit, which I was like, mm, maybe we should leave the trailer here. <laughs> but no, no, let's try the second hill. And then in the second hill, no, we realized that the, the wheels just started spinning. spinning and we weren't going to make it. And then the panic started. <laughs> So we left the trailer in an incline, yeah, decoupled so it slope. from the car. Yeah, which was a very scary thing. It was thing. so yeah. stressful. We couldn't maneuver it back to the flat point, so we had to just leave it there, not knowing if it was going to roll down the hill. And then this is how it went. We're emptying the car before we go rescue our trailer. <sighs> Drive it back up. Proper tetras, are they? So what we're doing is carrying everything into the car. So we didn't make it up the hill with the trailer and we had to leave it behind on a slope. And we got nervous. Super nervous. We have put a lot of stones behind it and put it on the handbrakes and stuff. And now we're just slowly taking small parts out and then bringing it up with the car and then bringing it to the house. So then going back to the trailer, putting the car full again and then going back at first. It's already 5 a.m. so an hour has passed since we arrived <laughs> and we're nowhere near done. <laughs> I'm so awake now though. Yeah, adrenaline baby. Yeah. It's also so cold, huh? They have frost <laughs> on the floor. Yeah, it's 4 degrees. It's so quiet. I think we've woken up the whole mountain. Yeah. That's Everyone needs to wake up to feed the cows, no? Not this early, babe. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. This is also crazy. <laughs> the situation is just absurd. We have a couch here on the side, emptying the trailer. The car is doing the second round. Then we'll have to take more stuff off, put the couch back on, and try carry it up the hill. Yes, absolute madness. Carrying this all here has been a torture. I know it doesn't fit in the house. Okay, it's, do you see it? Uh, almost 6.40 a.m. The trailer is in the property. Most of the stuff is of the trailer, not the fireplace and not a couple of other heavy things that we will deal with tomorrow. But everything else is here. Now we just have to bring in some boxes, some tools, shower, get into bed and recover. And then tomorrow we'll deal with this mess. I hope the car is fine. I hope the trailer is fine. I can't wait to have a hot shower because oh, it's so cold. My feet are frozen. We did it. We're in bed finally. It's 7.30 and we can finally go to sleep. I hope we sleep until very late. <laughs> we did it though. Good job. We had a bit of a fight at 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put that on tiredness. It's a mess outside, we'll show you tomorrow. And we're not fully done taking everything out of the trailer, but tomorrow another day. Yeah. For some hours. Tomorrow, hours. today another day. Today another day. <laughs> See you today. <laughs> So yeah, we went to sleep at 7.30 yeah. a.m. It's around 1 now. Now it's around 1. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. day. Yeah, we're actually looking at the snowy mountains. It has snowed a little bit further yeah. up. It feels so nice to be back. Yeah, it's really I good. I think we're going to take a few days to recover from the accumulated tiredness. Yeah, but we do have to start unpacking everything oh, and start yes. cleaning things up. So this is how it looks as you walk in. We have the couch, or part of the couch here. Boxes absolutely everywhere. And we need to organize it all and clean at the same time. The house has been empty for a month and a half and it's disgusting. It smells a bit funky. Yeah, and, and, and it's dusty everywhere. And there's a lot of rat poop. We need to figure that out. But that, that's not what's worrying me mostly. We need to clean the whole house. Basically, we're going to do a big spring organize. We, we can just call it that because it is spring. We're going to put everything in its place or temporary spot. 
What are you doing? And we have only a few days to do this because from next Monday onwards, and today is Wednesday, we have visitors nonstop. <laughs> For two months. <laughs> Month and a half. <laughs> Month and a half. We need to get the house ready or at least minimally presentable in time. There's one more minute of sitting. Yeah. No, no, no. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Hi, baby. How are you? You look older. Oh, you look very skinny. Like very his hair skinny. is really bad, He's baby. He's losing hair. What hey. He has lunch again. He has again. lunch. Oh, baby, you have lunch. We're gonna have to take care of this. Okay. okay, we're gonna give you a lot of food and we're gonna take you to the vet. Okay. He has a lot of lunch. Oh, baby, this happened to you last year. We heard. We heard you almost died. We're gonna take you to the vet. Don't worry. What happened to you? One month and you're like... <laughs> Falling you're like apart, destroyed. dude. <laughs> what happened, baby? Oh, you have also... Please. Oh, no. Baby. Oh, I'm sorry we left. I'm sorry. We're gonna take care of you. I'm gonna talk to your owners today, okay? Look at this poor baby's skin. You can see it. It's, it's really bad. This has been quite a bummer to come back and see that Cookie is so sick. Cookie is our neighbor's dog and unfortunately the dogs of the area, they're loved but they're not properly taken care of. There's a lot of lack of understanding and knowledge and also just culture. I know that he has had manch before because his owner told me that last year he almost died and that he had lost all his hair and that it was a woman that came from outside, a visitor, like a tourist, saw the condition of the dog and sent him some medication and told him how to apply it and that then he recovered fully. So I already knew that this had happened in the past, but clearly he's getting sick again. He has munch, he has ticks, he has fleas. His teeth don't look as great as last time. I mean, he's a really old dog. He's getting really old, but yeah, the skin is really bad. So we're going to feed him. I mean, we already fed him before leaving, but we're gonna feed him extra nutri nutritious food. And as soon as I can get a hold of our neighbors and I can ask if we can take him to the vet, we'll take him to the vet and get him a treatment and make sure that he is recovering and he'll be fine hopefully. Okay I just remembered I have emergency dog stuff for ticks and, and fleas so I've tried to put some on his back. He didn't allow me to put the whole doses because I guess it was burned but I checked that it's safe with Manj to do that and it should be fine and I'll call the vet today. It will be okay. This is unfortunately one of the toughest parts of being here. There's a lot of animals that you see in really sad conditions. We're gonna try our best to help those that are around us. I'm sad. I'm sad to to come back and see Cookie like this. We were already worried about being gone so long and and I don't know he's just used to us petting him every day and just giving him love. He always comes to see us but I did not expect him to be sick so quickly. One thing I'm going to miss of being away is being able to put a washing machine at any point, do not have to worry about your electricity, you know, the things that we have here that are a bit limiting. But luckily, the weather is beautiful and we're gonna make the most of it because we have so much to wash. So, load one already done, load two is already in the washing machine and we have like three more or four more to go over the coming days. I hope the sun keeps up because oh, the weather is beautiful for us, but also it makes life here much, much easier. The garden furniture is finally coming outside. <laughs> Yay, garden furniture where it belongs. <laughs> really deep clean the living area now. I don't think we've ever made such an effort. The fireplace is certainly the cleanest it's ever been. Yeah, we've just made sure to really deep clean and now we're gonna bring in our new sofa. So let's see how that goes, I'm so excited. everyone we can sit together in the evenings eee, a little luxuries okay we're gonna go through this pile of boxes now and see what needs to be stored where 
I already found my new collection of tins for tea. This is the bowl we bought in France. Look how beautiful it's gonna be our new, oh, oh, it's gonna be our new fruit bowl. Our man survived. Well, this is a, this is a metal frame, so I would hope so. Another food box. That's all of the presents we brought people from the Netherlands. This garden thing. For crafts, random decor stuff. Paid 250 for this. These are all random thrift finds that I want to save for now. Although, if you watched our video in the Netherlands, I found this Benka Kalambanan. What was it? Anyway, it's for good luck. I'm gonna hang it on the wall because we need all the luck we can get. <laughs> We're thrifting extra house shoes every time we see ones that are in good condition in different sizes so that when we have guests coming over, they all have shoes to wear in the house. Also super handy to put above the sink. Thrifted it for 250. More brass candlesticks. And lots of tapered candles that I found secondhand for 25 cents each. This that I found for a future door for $1.95. That's not necessary for now. We brought our favorite cups back from the Netherlands. This cute little cup Muti gave us. It's from a ceramist. But this I think I'm going to save for when our house is more done up and we have more space in the kitchen. Muti made this for us, for, for hanging plants. The cute salt and pepper shaker. This is gonna go into storage. We don't need more stuff in the kitchen now. Our kitchen cannot fit anything. Oh, my tiny paintings. So I showed these already in the Netherlands. I just bought these two little crochet paintings, but they're to add to my collection because another time I had thrifted this ones. So see, now I have four. So cute. I thrifted now this beautiful curtain for the guest bedroom. And we're gonna hang it. Unfortunately, I could only find one panel, but since the window's not very big, perhaps it works. I hope. Thrifted this cute little plate. By itself, it cost us one euro in Brussels, and I thought it would be really good for under plants. For my birthday, I've just been gifted by a dear friend a sprout germinator, which is something I really wanted because I want to start eating more little greens, healthy greens. I'm so excited to start using this. Another tin for tea. I bought this lamp secondhand for 20 bucks. I just really like the green. Thrifted a ton of curtain rings because we need for all the curtains. So 250 for this bag. The lamp survived. <laughs> Bought this painting secondhand in Brussels. And I think the artist is Thai, which I'm really excited about because I rarely ever like art. And then we thrifted this little art piece in the Netherlands, really detailed. I would love to make the... Um, oh, I forgot how that's called. This paper thing around a nice bright color to make it pop or the frame. It's print 77 of 100 and it's signed, so that's really cool. This is a lampshade to a lamp that I thrifted in Brussels. That's really cool. This is the body of the lamp. This is for a future lamp. Cool little lampshade. 150 thrifted. More crafting supplies. I think I bought them for one euro. My birthday gift! I'm so happy you brought it. I didn't know you packed it. This bowl paid 450 for it. Another wooden bowl, beautiful. Don't know how much we paid. And a big mama bowl, which we bought in Brussels. I think we paid four euros for it, if I remember correctly. This is such a beauty. It's a hanging lamp, all in brass from Brussels market. And we're gonna put it one day hanging next to the guest bed, I think. And a ton of towels. I've been keeping these towels for years. My mom gifted them to me a long time ago and I always kept them for the day I had a house. <laughs> so I think it's been like five years at least that I have all of these beautiful brand new towels. <laughs> Warner got this beautiful brass light. I don't know if you can get an idea, but it's really cool. We'll hang it sometime soon, hopefully. Lots of string for my sewing machine. So this should go with my sewing machine. I'm so tired. Even this is a struggle. Why are you fighting me? Nice wooden spoons thrifted. This is for the craft box, paint brushes. This is a tea we just got gifted. Thrifted kitchen stuff. Anytime we see something in good condition that like costs like 50 cents, a euro, we buy it. Garlic crusher. More curtain rings. These are, will be the main ones because they're black. A brass candle snuffer. Thrifted, of course. And then I got this 
sets of cutlery this time around. I love them. There's not enough for a full dinner thing. So it's only for Warner and me, if it's the two of us. But look how pretty they're wood. And they were two euros, the bundle. Camping light. <laughs> so pretty, obviously it needs to be closed properly but i love it and we paid i think five bucks for it we're gonna put it out for ambient lighting in the evenings and then we have more thrifted tapered candles and then the beautiful lamp this is gonna be your bedside lamp ah oh, i love it bought in a proper vintage store for 24 euros i like this one we'll just need to rewire it properly it's a nice lamp face i adore it and it's ceramic it looks metal and i thought it was metal but no it's ceramic it's so pretty this we bought in the brussels market years ago they're so beautiful we just fell in love and we thought we'll buy them for our future home we have one two three four five six seven eight look at the detail they're metal stunning your skin come your skin looks fine come here because it then it's not contagious man Just lifted the bed and found this. I'm so upset. Okay, so no more carpet in the bedroom. No. Where's the damp coming from? Below. It's very cold downstairs. Okay, so as you just saw, I wanted to deep clean our bedroom and lift the mattress and everything, take out the carpet. And then when we did that, we saw there was mold underneath the bed frame on the carpet that we brought back from Algeria. We're gonna have to take that to get dry cleaned. And I guess the floor is damp. And the reason for this is the floor here is just one single layer of wood planks. And then from downstairs, that's it. Like you can see the, the floorboards. And downstairs there must be a lot of humidity and cold. And it must have come up through the bed. Which is such a shame. Because I kind of thought that would happen when we moved in. This was the bed that was here. And it was on the floor because the, bed, the legs are broken. And I lifted it expecting it to be all mold down like underneath but it was fine so i was like okay well if it's been fine before i guess it's fine now clearly that's not the case we don't have legs for this bed like the spots for the legs are completely wrecked so we're gonna have to well clean everything really well and then put some um, cardboard with some bricks to just have it a bit elevated so that the airflow can go through we won't put the carpet down anymore which is a shame because it made our bedroom cozy we're gonna clean everything really well hopefully that is enough. And then now we have to add to the list bed frame. That is one of our first plans when renovating inside. We want to lift all the floor, insulate it and put down the floor again, which is going to be a lot of work. And people that we've told we're going to do this are like, why would you do that? And it's like, well, first downstairs, if anyone is up here, you hear like there's a train running over top. <laughs> it's so, so loud. So it's not livable downstairs in any way. But also, yeah, we feel the cold coming up constantly through the floor. Like there's even spots next to the edges where you feel like a breeze coming up so it has to has to happen i'm just bummed out our <laughs> carpet and mold we've been living with mold how long do you think that's been there anyway it's the evening time almost so we need to clean everything make the bedroom really really clean so that we can go to bed in a clean space I decided to take out the um, fabric that was covering the bottom part of the frame because I just didn't trust it and it's terrible. I can't believe we've been sleeping with this. So this bed frame is going in the garbage. It's so dangerous to live like this. Okay, we're gonna get these beds up, throw the other one out and then replace all the beds in the future. Replace the house. <laughs> <laughs> Focusing on the positives. The wood floor, not damaged whatsoever, has no signs of mold, neither here nor downstairs. The mattress, no signs of mold whatsoever, it's perfect. It looks like the bed frame was moldy underneath, but it didn't cross over to the top. Everything else is fine. We're gonna put the single bed frames and just put the mattress on top. 
and figure stuff out at a later date. Okay, so there's going to be a gap on both sides because our mattress is not big enough. But that's the least of our worries. <laughs> we have new linen curtains that I got secondhand for free. And I'm excited for our bedroom to be feel cozier. So we have an upgrade at least in that part. Shall we see how tall they are? They're the perfect lamp! That's a blessing! <laughs> And just like that, our bedroom has gotten an impromptu refresh. The bed is now not on the ground. There's no carpet. We've used the two small single beds that we had, the frame, and the two single bed headboards. There we've put our new lamp from the Netherlands. On the wall we've hung our charms, our good luck charms, because we need good luck, for sure. Up there we just have a little painting of an elephant made in India that I have from when I was a child. Fresh bed sheet. Oh, that smelled glorious! And then here, kind of difficult to show the color, it being against the light, but we have our new, to us, but secondhand linen curtains that we've gotten for free. They are green, grayish color, it's kind of difficult to capture it, but they look so nice with our stone. I'm so, so happy about these curtains. And that's it! I can't wait to sleep tonight in a fresh bed with no mold, very clean bedroom, we've vacuumed absolutely everything, all the stones, the wall, everything, we've vacuumed everything we could. And I think it looks pretty nice. These are boxes that are going to stay downstairs with stuff, craft books, just things we need to put away, like cushions, etc. Sorry if you hear Warner shouting in the background, he's talking to his mom. Just all the things in the kitchen, very messy, a lot of things we need to wash, but it's all good. We're gonna do two more boxes. Ice lollies. Useless because we don't have a fridge. Nice little monkey hook. Wow, this wooden bowl was a steal, babe. It's beautiful. I, mean, I got it for 250. This must have been a long time ago. We have way too many wooden bowls now. And this is to cover stuff from flies, will be very handy. In the summer here, we're super lucky. We got a whole set of WMF. Pants, which is a German brand in case you don't know. They were more expensive, but we made a deal with a thrift shop and it's a whole set. Like, I'm so excited about this in all different sizes. This is the ice cream, the cake server and cutlery that I've just bought, just thrifted in the Netherlands. This beautiful cup I thrifted a year ago for three euros and I thought of it as a toothbrush holder. See? Super cool. Water gara thing. Also thrifted. Snow stepping, ice stepping things. A proper knife for the first time in our life. This was gifted to Warner years ago, maybe three years ago, and we saved it in the box for when we had a home. And we finally do! The box is now wet and damp, but oh well. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have to be so careful, babe, or we're gonna lose a finger. So, some rope, secondhand rope, <laughs> for Warner. <laughs> okay, this ice cube trays that we've been buying, secondhand silicone ones, because they're super handy. This one would go for us. This for when we have a fridge, so it can go with the ice lolly thing. More thrifted candles. My favorite candle. It smells like bonfire, it's amazing. Cake tin. Secondhand muffin tins, tartlet tins. <laughs> Vintage. This I bought in Australia in Savers. It says $1.99. And I brought it with me to Europe to one day paint on it. Warner gifted me some vegan Asian cookbooks because Asian cuisines are my favorite. So we have the Lotus and the Artichoke Malaysia. Then vegan Thai kitchen, vegan Asian and the Korean vegan cookbook. I can't wait to try these. Okay, this is the aftermath of today. The living room, super clean. Now it looks a bit messy because we've put some stuff on top of the couch when we were moving things around, but it's really clean. The bedroom, super clean, refreshed. I feel so much better about it. And then there's still stuff everywhere, 
but we've cleared a lot of the boxes and we're losing light quickly so we'll stop recording but we're gonna continue organizing everything putting things away and i think we've been super successful to have arrived this morning at 4 a.m. and gone to sleep at 7.30. Today was amazing. Yeah, we're gonna cook now a proper dinner because we only had pack noodles for lunch breakfast. We'll continue tomorrow. <sighs> Feeling much better. I had a, a down moment with the mold because I just, I hate putting ourselves in yeah dangerous situations and mold is so, so dangerous. But we caught it. We got rid of the frame. It's far, far away from the house now. We'll take it to the dump tomorrow or after tomorrow. And yeah, that's that's what we can do. So 